Hi, how's it going? We're going to be diving back into annotative text here for a bit. And we're going to be looking at it in a real world scenario here where the city of Chicago requires these blow up views. These are at 1 to 10. Sometimes we go to 1 to 5. Um, and the drawing is actually at 30 scale. So you can see at 30 scale, it is quite crowded and you really can't get the detail you would need for these items here to appear correctly. So we're going to dive in and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, so first things first, this is our layout space, uh, AKA paper space. Um, so I'm going to go into model space now and uh, we're going to zoom into our areas here. So looking at the area here and looking at the toolbar right here. And again, if you do not have this toolbar here, um, click on the three lines here and you'll see it. It's under there. It's going to be a little cut off on the video here. Uh, but it's called annotation scale. Just make sure that's checked on and you should be able to see it. In fact, I would turn on annotation visibility, auto scale, and annotation scale just to make sure you can see it all. Um, so again, looking at this right here, I'm going to turn some things off just for simplicity and so I don't accidentally click them as I'm kind of going over. It likes to highlight it. Now, these are actually two commercial site plans put together here. Um, so you might see some overlapping text here. Uh, but this is actually on a separate layer that can be turned off and it's actually turned off in the other viewport. Um, so I'll turn it off there. Um, so let's take a look at it. So I want you to pay extra special attention to right here um, as I switch the annotation scale to 10. So when I switched it to 10, if you notice the rest of the grades turned off, the rest of the grades are still on the same layer as these, except the other grades are only set to display at 30 scale. So for so for not using layers, I can still control what's going to be on at what scale and what's going to change. Now we're also using this in the form of block annotation as well. As you can see here, these are no longer appearing when I set to 10 and now I have the little views here. Now the nice thing about the shots in the background here, this is not a civil 3D topo, but I can turn them off in these blow up views and not have to worry about too much stuff being where I don't want it to. So if I go to here and I go to 30, again, you can kind of see, and then if I want to get in, put more grades in detail, I can come in and add more grades. Now how this was done, again, is just using annotative scale. So I took one like this one here, which it appears at both scales, you can kind of see it out here, um, and I edited it. So we're gonna take a look at that real quick. So if I go to properties here and I click on the annotation, it says it's only being displayed at 30 currently, but if I click that little button, I can see, okay, it's also gonna display at a 10. So this grade in particular shows up in both scales. So any grades I want to show up in both scales, all I can do is click on it and make sure it shows up in both. So once that is done, what I do then is I switch myself into the other view. And now I have this grade here, which shows up in both scales. So I'm gonna make a new grade here, and I'm gonna copy that one. Oops. Hang on, just gonna do a quick copy. I don't know why it didn't take both, but I'll just, just make sure it's gonna grab it correctly. I'm gonna make sure I click on both. So I'm gonna take a look at this now, and I'm gonna change it. So I'm gonna go to the properties here, and make sure that this is not going to display at 10 or only display at 10. It is set up only to display at 10 instead of both scales. So taking a look at it again, only 10, good, only 10, good. So from here, once you get one of them in there, you can just copy them around and then remove the ones that you don't want to see in both scales. Um, so for instance, this guy here is displaying over here and here. Um, it's a little bit of an error, I think, but um, either way, it's still doing what it's intended. And the nice thing is, is I can sit here and adjust these here, and it looks really nice, but if these had to be all crammed in here at 30 scale, it wouldn't look good. So if I change it here, if you notice, they disappear. So again, just controlling these items, again, just go to properties of them and tell them you only want to see it at 10 scale. Now, if I did happen to want to see this one at 30, I can hit add and say, okay, I want to see it at 30 as well, and I can hit okay. So now this one here will appear at both spots. Now again, it doesn't look good, um, and I can say, ooh, maybe I didn't want that, and I can easily come in here and just delete the 30 off. Now it will not display, and when I go back to 10, it should still be there. 
and there it is. So again, a really quick kind of easy way to kind of put into perspective how we do what we do um, when we do these little uh, annotative exhibits. And again, it's really good for blow-ups. So again, I have my main view here, and then I have all these little individual blow-ups here that uh, take care, and I can go into detail and move everything. Now, notice that this one here is a little off. So the manhole's here, but the dot's here. Now, if we look in this view here, where are we? I gotta kinda orientate myself. There we go. So if we look in this view here, again, it's not there. Um, so the manhole moved, but the note never moved. So that actually happens quite common. So we can take him and just move him back over to there. Um, so sometimes things like that will happen, um, or it'll be moved in 30 scale and not in the 10 scale. Because remember, um, the location here can be in two different places. If you notice, this location was really jacked up. Um, when I clicked on this guy here, he's showing up all the way over here, and it's labeled for actually over there, and they just put another label in. So again, you can get really tricky. In fact, this is kind of wrong, but um, and it still worked, though, and they worked through it to get the job done. Um, so again, I kind of use examples of things that I either I've done or I've looked over in the past, and this is one of those um, I've worked on it and looked it over, and it's kind of interesting the way it's all set up. And this is for a, uh, a commercial lot, a proposed retail in Chicago. So you got some railroad tracks here too. Um, so again, it's kind of just the way to organize it. And you can create these quick details, which will show things at two different scales. Um, also, the other thing that's showing up at a different scale are the manholes. So if you look here, that manhole has two different sizes. Now, Odds are you want this to show up at every view possible. I don't know why it's showing up at one the one there. I'm not going to erase it. Um, but if you notice, this one shows up in 10 scale views, 20 scale views, and 30 scale views. Probably rightfully so. Uh, but you can really mess people up if you were to delete 30 out of here. And then you went and looked at it at 30 scale. You could say, well, there, there's no manhole there. I don't know what you guys are talking about. There's a label there. Well, yeah, there probably is a manhole there. But it wasn't added to the 30 scale object so you have to watch out for it sometimes because that right there could cause some problems down the road for uh, the draftsman and the engineering team alike um, just to make sure that everything is set up correctly um, and that's where this could really go wrong is when it's not set up correctly now you can see the manholes back um, so again just got to be patient go through it um, and make sure that whatever is set to show up at both 30 and 10 is correct and whatever's only set to so yeah I can't even talk today whatever's set to show up only at 10 is correct as well again so here real quick another looking at it again so you can see at the overview 10 scale look everything disappears and there's some weird things going on over here I don't even know why they're there um, but obviously they're outside the viewport it's not causing anybody any grief so I'm not worried about it um, 30 scale oh it's all back so Again, watch out for it. Um, you can see where things go wrong. So this this guy right here is also here. So when they moved the points or when they modified the points, they took and dragged them and it dragged all these down. Um, so this point exists in two separate places. So if I really cared and this was wrong and I just didn't want these to show up in 10 scale, the proper way to deal with it is to honestly select them like I am right now. And I'm selecting both the text and the other piece, it looks like it may have been exploded at some point in time. I just don't want any errors. Um, so I'm going to select it all here. I'm going to come up here to my properties dialog box. If it's not up already, again, just click on it, right click, go to properties, it'll pull up, and then set everything so that it only displays at 30 scale for these because we don't need the 10 scale for those objects. And if you notice, as soon as I did that, it all disappeared. Uh, but I'm just going to double check and make sure that the leaders came with it. And there you go. So I kind of got rid of the extra pieces here. So this guy here, looking at him, he's also right there. So again, just the easy fixes. In fact, you didn't really have to fix it um, unless you're kind of a perfectionist like myself and sees things like this and then just has to get rid of it. Um, but now again, it will show up at 30. But you got to watch out because the person who didn't know what they were doing might have clicked on it and hit delete. And it's going to delete it out of both spaces. So you're going to lose those grades that you were looking for. Um, so again, watch out with the delete key. If you see annotative text showing up in one place, not the other, don't just click on it and hit delete. Make sure you remove that scale out of there so it doesn't appear. If you click delete, you're going to erase both of them, 
and then you're going to have to redo one or the other depending on which one was correct. So again, this is just a quick 10 minute, uh, probably about 15 minutes by the time the video is over, a breakdown of how we use annotative scale to our advantage in both text and blocks. And again, it's not too hard to grasp. Watch the other annotative scale video. It kind of goes over adding in detail and stuff like that. But um, this one here hopefully encompasses it all together and uh, helps you guys kind of figure it out a little bit easier. Because um, honestly, one of the more complicated things to use is annotative scale. Again, thank you for watch watching. Click that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.